Hi everyone, if you're just tuning in, this is the third video in the series in which I walk through turning this ProMaster 2500 cargo van into this four season camper van, which has a queen bed, shower, toilet, kitchen sink, microwave, fridge, freezer, swivel seats, and a power system with lithium batteries, shore power, solar, and van charging. The first two videos walk through installation of the exterior items like solar, roof fan, the air conditioner, and inside with framing, electrical rough-in and spray foam insulation. Links are in the description below for those videos. For this video, we take a look at framing out the shower and the toilet box, as well as finishing the ceiling and walls, so stay tuned. With the ceiling framing up, we're ready to finish the ceiling, which is pretty exciting as it's the first glimpse of what the finished product inside the van is actually going to look like. It's pretty straightforward with the furring strips already in place. You simply attach the finished ceiling boards to the furring strips. For my finished ceiling, I went with cedar planks from Home Depot. They're thin so they don't reduce the usable height too much, and they're very lightweight. Also, cedar is typically good at not absorbing moisture, which is always good in a van. The first thing I did was make a line down the center of the van with a chalk line and installed the first board along this line between the fan and the air conditioner. This established a straight line that I could work from. This is where the framing around the fan came in handy and I also had to create a frame around the air conditioner to attach the ceiling panels to. I then worked out from the center toward the walls of the van. I would put a few pieces up and then stuff more insulation in just to fill in any low spots in the spray foam. As I installed the ceiling boards, I used a countersink bit so the screw heads would be out of the way so I could come back later and fill in with wood filler, sand, and then paint to give a nice finished look with no screws visible. The other thing to mention here is that if you have anything you'll want to secure to the ceiling, like a shower wall or upper cabinets, like I did, you want to put additional support in the ceiling so these things can attach to more than just the ceiling uh, board panels. Uh, you'll see that here. And that's pretty much it for the ceiling. Here's the finished product sanded a couple of times with two coats of paint. The next step was to build this waterproof toilet box and make sure it fit into the shower properly. It needed to be the correct size to fit the Laveo dry flush toilet, be able to have enough wiggle room so that the toilet could slide out into the shower when it needed to be used, uh, and also be angled so if, the, if water splashed in it from the shower, uh, the water would run back into the shower and not puddle in the back of the toilet box. I started by marking out on the floor where the shower was going to go. Uh, this took a minute as uh, I had to make sure the drain on the shower pan was in a place where it could go through the floor without hitting a support beam underneath the van and also make sure that the drain was in an appropriate place to be able to run the drain pipe to the gray water tank which is going to be mounted under the van later. Once that location was determined, I framed around the pan and then built the walls. This was a pretty big shower for a camper van to begin with, but one of the things I did to make it even bigger was I mounted the shower pan out a couple of inches away from the base of the wall. This allowed the shower wall to bow out at the waist, so it kind of added a couple of inches of width uh, so that the shower is bigger than the actual shower pan dimensions. Finally, the last thing once the shower was framed was to cover with thin plywood. I actually did this later in the build so that I still had access to wire switches and outlets which went on the outside of the shower walls. The plywood will be used as a backing for the FRP that I will use later to finish out the shower walls. The final piece for this video is finishing the walls. For this I used 5 inch pine shiplap from Home Depot. I could have gone with MDF uh, for this as it would have given a smoother look uh, as the pine does have some imperfections in it, but I opted for the pine for durability as it will hold up better than the MDF. Once everything is framed, it's a matter of attaching the shiplap piece by piece, taking care of the corners and angles of the walls to ensure each indent in the shiplap lines up and is level with the next. Countersink the screws so once installed you can cover sand and paint for a smooth finish look with no screws showing. This pic shows uh, how different uh, it looks between the finished and the non-finished. 
Also, you can see here a little bit better than before where the head and foot of the bed will extend into the walls, allowing for that standard short queen mattress to fit side to side instead of front to back, saving on space. And here's the finished walls, which only needed one coat of paint from me uh, as the boards were pre-painted white when I bought them. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Next up in video four in the build series, uh, I'll show the flooring installation and the electrical finish. So look for that soon.